Hi everyone, my name is Karine Ferreira. I work at the National Institute for Space Research in Brazil. And here, together with my colleague, Gilberto Queiroz, I will present an overview of the Brazil Data Cube project that we are coordinating at INPE. Uh, the Brazil Data Cube project started last year in 2019. And the project has four main goals. Uh, the first goal is to create analysis red data of medium resolution images for all Brazilian region, including images from the satellite Cybers 4, Landsat 8, and Sentinel 2. And the second goal is to create multi dimensional data cubes from these image collections. And the, th the third goal is to develop and use the big data technologies, uh, machine learning methods, and image time series analysis uh, to store, process, and extract information from these image collections and data cubes. And the last goal is to create land use and cover information for all Brazilian territory using the image collections, data cubes, and methods uh, developed in these projects. Uh, the data cubes are created uh, using a grid defined in the Brazil Data Cube project. Uh, this grid is composed by uh, 560 tiles, as uh, shown in this picture. Uh, this picture shows an overview of the Brazil Data Cube project. Uh, in this project, we are producing data cubes for all Brazilian territory from medium resolution satellite images. We are also developing and using neural networks uh, to analyze land use and cover ground samples and machine learning methods to create land use and cover maps from time series extracted from these data cubes. Uh, these methods are available in our package called SITS, available, available in a GitHub uh, website. We started to work on this workflow in 2016 in a precursor project called Essency. In the project, we are producing data and software products, as shown in this picture. The data products include analyzed red image collections, multi-dimensional data cubes <clears throat> from these images, land use and cover samples, and the metadata of all the, these data sets. Uh, and the software products that are being developed in the project include web services, a set of web services to access and process all data sets, and applications with graphical interface uh, for final users. And to create the analysis red data, uh, we are getting the images from external providers, such as USGS and ESA, and using the softwares provided by them, uh, such as LAS, RC, and Centricor, to create surface reflectance of these images, as you can see here in this picture. And from this surface reflectance image, we are creating data cubes in three steps, search, warp, and temporal composition. Uh, this picture shows an example of the pro process uh, to create a monthly data cube in one grid tile. Uh, for each month, uh, we first select the images that intersect the grid tile. In this example, we have uh, we can see that we have images in four distinct days in a month: day one, day eight, day seventeen, and day twenty-four. After that, we reproject and merge these images by day in a mosaic, and then we crop the merged images by tile as you can see here in this image. Uh, and the last step uh, is to apply a time composition function to combine or group all these images in a month. And the time composition is applied just on valid observations that are not detected as cloud or cl cloud shadow by the quality assessment band. Uh, so in this example, for, uh, for a specific pixel, we have three valid observations and three observations that were detected as cloud or cloud shadow in a month. So to group the valid observations, we are using three different functions, average, median, and stack. Uh, the first function calculates the average of the valid observation by, by month. 
Uh, the set of function get the median value by month, as you can see here. And the stack function sort the pixel values by their quality assessment bands and get the pixel value with higher quality. Uh, so in the project, we are develop a set of web services to query, access, and process the data sets in their met metadata. Uh, these web services include OGC web services, such as WFS and WCS. And the image collections and data cubes metadata are disseminated in the project in compliance with the stack specification. Uh, the WTSS uh, is an, one example of a service that is designed and developed by the project team. And uh, this service returns time series associated to a specific data cube, spatial location, and period. And, and it returns a JSON document with the time series as shown in this picture. Uh, another web service that we are developing in the Brazil Data Cube project is the web land trajectory service. Uh, based on a set of land use and cover data produced by different projects in Brazil, such as TerraClass, PRODS, and DTER, uh, this service returns how a given spatial location was classified by these projects over time. So in this example, you can see an example of a spatial location that was classified as forest, by the PRODEX project, after that as deforestation alert by the DTER project, and at, at the end by pasture uh, by another project called TerraClass project. Uh, this service is very useful for us uh, to analyze land use and cover samples uh, in Brazil and to analyze the classif classification result results produced in our project. Uh, we are developing a set of applications uh, with graphical interfaces, as I said. Uh, here we can see the Brazil Data Cube web portal uh, that is available on this web uh, address. Uh, we are also working to provide an instance of the Open Data Cube software to access and process the data cubes produced by the Brazil Data Cube project. Uh, using the Brazil Data Cube portal, users can so, uh, select the data cubes that are ready for Brazil, uh, visualize these data cubes by time, use a, a slider tool, as you can see in this picture, download the data cubes files, visualize the difference between two time periods of data cubes, and uh, to access time series associated to specific locations of data cubes using the WTSS service. Uh, this picture shows examples of three monthly data cubes created using the time composition function stack uh, from images of the satellites CBERS-4, Sentinel-2, and Landsat-8. Uh, these data cubes were created for three years in the Brazil Data Cube project uh, from 2016 to 2019. Uh, and these data cubes are available in, the, in our uh, web portal. Here we can see examples of NDV, NDVI time series of one agriculture year from 2018 to 2019, extracted from the CBERS for data cube associated to three different types of land use and cover classes, né? natural vegetation, uh, agriculture, and pasture. Uh, this time series associated to land use and cover samples uh, are used to train machine learning methods in our workflow. And here, uh, this picture shows land use and cover classification results that we produced in the Brazil Data Cube project uh, of four different data cubes of CBERS4 images using different time composition function, stack and median, and different time steps. 16 days and monthly. Uh, in this case study, we classified the time series of one agriculture year using the, the, veg the vegetation index and bands, NDVI, EVI, blue, green, red, and near. And we used a deep learning classifier with five layers and developed in the CITSR package. Thanks, Karine. Uh, another thread of work in the project 
is related to provide access to the Brazil Data Cube imagery through different APIs and technologies. We are also working on the integration of the Open Data Cube platform with the Brazil Data Cube. As we can see here, we have all the data stored in a distributed file system and the main catalog is available in a web service based on Stack. So we developed scripts to automatically read from the Stack and make the indexing of the assets into the UDC internal catalog kept in a Postgres SQL database. Thus, uh, the user will have access to the data through the ODC API in a Jupyter Interactive environment. Uh, the volume of the input image collections used in the project is around 750 terabytes. Remembering that from these data sets, we also derive surface reflectance and then the data cubes. So we are also using a cloud platform to address the need of data volume and data processing. Regarding the experience with the cloud, we have been developing tools in the context of the GEO AWS Cloud Credits program. This work has been carried out in three, in three fronts, the data cube generation, the production of land use and cover maps based on machine learning, and the development of general purpose web services. For the data cube generation, we developed a whole system that helps users to install and configure the computational infrastructure needed to create the data cubes. So there is a web application responsible for preparing and launching the Brazil Data Cube services on AWS, and uh, another one that makes use of this computational infrastructure to assist a user in the process of Data Cube creation. Here we can see that the Data Cube Cloud setup is a web application built on Angular with a REST API in Python. This application is responsible for the preparation of the data queue builder on AWS with all the computational infrastructure and the services required to create the data cubes from the image collections. Uh, this second application, named Data Cube Manager, is also prepared by the Data Cube Cloud setup that make it available in an S3 bucket as a static web application without the configuration needed to manage the services in the Data Cube Builder. So the services developed by the, BDC, the Brazil Data Cube team take advantage of some of uh, AWS technologies, such as the serverless Lambda functions to perform image processing operations and other services to control the tasks and the store of the status of the processing and the metadata about the generated images. In the Data Cube Manager, uh, the user uh, has access to the list of data cubes already generated and also the possibility to create a new one. The creation of a data cube starts by the definition of a target grid system associated to a spatial reference system. Then the user selects the input image collection the region of interest in the time interval. The system will provide uh, an estimation of the number of images involved in the processing. After that, the user must provide some basic information about the data queue as its name, uh, the local S3 bucket to store the data cube, the spatial resolution of the images in the queue, the temporal composition, the strategy to select the pixels, uh, the input bands, and also the related bands to compose quick looks. The system also provides an estimation of the resources involved in the data queue production. Uh, there are some optional metadata to be provided as license details. And finally, the process is launched in the AWS platform. Uh, the user uh, can use 
the data cube manager to monitor the data cube creation uh, after that. And this application is under active development and we will have the first version soon. This is the main website of the project. From here, you can access the GitHub with all the software under development. The work has been carried by a multidisciplinary team and we would like also to thank all the people behind the project. Muito obrigado.